Hi, welcome back to MedSelects. It's been a while since we've talked about uh, developments in the uh, campaign as we move from what was called the pre-campaign to now the inter-campaign. But there have been a couple of significant things that have happened in the last couple of days with the major candidates. The Probably the biggest issue surrounds Ricardo Anaya, who has been accused of, among other things, money laundering, running phantom uh, companies uh, with phantom building contracts and, and so forth. Uh, Anaya has very cleverly spun this uh, to make himself the martyr of uh, establishment or PRI, the uh, establishment party, the govern governing party, um, uh, persecution. So he's very cleverly kind of uh, played this one. Um, and uh, is, is trying, obviously, to, to prevent the PRI candidate Miade as presenting himself as the, um, uh, the candidate uh, of, uh, against corruption right. and, and, and so forth. So let's talk about that. I mean, uh, this is a this is, uh, very interesting little drama that's unfolding. Yeah, this is a uh, classic piece of <clears throat> Mexican political theater that's developing here in front of us. Um, throughout the six years of the Peña Nieto administration, the PRI and the PAN were in lockstep in all of the major reforms uh, that came down the pike. The fiscal reform, the very controversial energy reform that part privatized Pemex, and the educational reform which, had, which has uh, the teachers up in arms. None of those would have passed without uh, the PAN. And if you go on YouTube, you can see Ricardo Naya making these implorations, these, yeah. you know, these verbose, eloquent speeches in favor of all of these uh, reforms. Right. Um, and now, because he's being charged with very serious allegations of, of money laundering and illegal enrichment, he's now painting himself as the martyr of governmental prosecution. Right. And in that sense, trying to paint himself as an opposition figure right. and tap into that huge anti-establishment feeling, right. uh, you know, which is really fueling this election and in previous okay. years, and try to paint himself as the man, the one who was standing up to uh, the PRI's corruption, he's now saying, if I'm elected, I will go after all the PRI corruption, including Peña Nieto. Yeah, right. Uh, and so what about Miade? I mean, he's kind of tactically uh, and cleverly mm -hmm. uh, now spinning his campaign as yeah. essentially a, a, a campaign against corruption, obviously mm -hmm. referencing uh, Anaya's situation. So uh, how do you think that's going to play out? Not too well, I don't think. Um, Mayavi is trying to, as you say, pin himself as the anti-corruption candidate. Uh, the problem is, you know, it's very easy to say, well, where were you with all of these PRI governors, Javier Duarte, Cesar Duarte, a laundry list of PRI governors, when he was the fiscal secretary? Yeah, right. Where was he uh, at the Cenesol, the development secretariat, when there was uh, a huge diversion of resources through public universities, uh, beginning uh, before him, but continuing through uh, his time there? Um, so he was omiss in so many things over his time, uh, five different periods in two different cabinets. It's really hard for him at this yeah. point to try to reinvent right. himself. And this just plays into um, Anaya's discourse because Anaya can say, why didn't they go after him, him, and him, right. but they're coming after me. Right, right. Kind of, and presumably Lopez Obrador is kind of laughing his way to the... To, to the bank in terms of vo voter support. But yeah, so just really quickly there, yeah. Lopez Obrador is sitting back and eating popcorn, as you yeah. say. <laughs> but as we know, those of us who followed Mexican politics for a long time, uh, the whole government apparatus is going after Anaya now to get him out of the way. Uh, but as Cesar Gonzalez said in our roundtable of the day, they will then use the entire apparatus of the state to go after AMLO. Right. Um, subsequently. Okay, so the second issue is uh, pretty interesting too. Um, the American ambassador, uh, Trump's ambassador, but um, not appointed by Trump, yeah. uh, Roberta Jackson has said, enough is enough, um, I'm resigning. Yeah. Uh, Peña Nieto and Trump had a, a telephone tiff Yes. Uh, Peña Nieto said, I'm not coming to visit you yeah. uh, because you keep insisting that we're going to pay for the wall. Yeah. That is political suicide in Mexico. So uh, let's just call the whole thing off. Right. 
Um, so what do you what do you make of that? And who's likely to replace uh, Roberta Jackson as the American ambassador? Yeah, this is a very interesting um, <clears throat> case, and it's part of this huge exodus of State Department officials out of the Trump uh, out of the Trump yeah. White House. Yeah. Um, I think only Trump's uh, uber clumsy foreign policy could make Peña Nieto look, look tough. Good. <laughs> look good. Peña Nieto has been perhaps the most servile Mexican president to U.S. Uh, interests, uh, and only Trump's insistence that Mexico pay for the wall, um, uh, only Trump's insistence that Mexico pay for the wall has made Peña be able to say, look, I could stand up to Trump and say, uh, we're not paying. Right. Um, and so the PRI tried to spin this as, "Look, we're standing up to we're standing yeah. up to Trump." Finally, yeah. uh, the problem is just a day or so after that news came out of the uh, Foreign Relations Secretary Luis Videgaray attempting to influence Jared Kushner through right. backdoor yes, yes. channels yeah. there, together with a few other uh, foreign secretaries. Kushner then subsequently lost his high security uh, clearance. Right. Uh, so the thing got uh, very cloudy, very. Very very quickly, um, so Roberta Jacobson is out, and you know, as this revolving door of elites go, the person who seems most likely to replace him is uh, Ed Whitaker. Right. Um, Ed Whitaker was Carlos Slim's business partner back when um, Mexico's telephone industry, Telmex, was privatized, I turning see. a public monopoly into a private one, and turning uh, Slim into, for a time, uh, the wealthiest man in the world. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, not surprisingly now, uh, Whitaker looks to be tapped to be the U.S. ambassador and, of course, will be a perfect person to advance his interests, Trump's interests, anybody else but the national interest. Right.